a KQED television production. Another umami bomb. <laughs> umami bomb. <laughs> Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Total Wine and More offers over 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits with specialists on hand to provide advice on any item. Now open in Mountain View, Pleasant Hill, and Fremont. La Tour Angel Artisan Oils, French-inspired and handcrafted in Northern California. La Tour Angel creates natural, healthy cooking oils that add new flavor to everyday dishes. Sutter Health CPMC, investing in community care for more than 150 years, including two new smart hospitals. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Mattress systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. At Adeline and Ashby in Berkeley. Online at sleepworks.com. Natural and engineered stone, designer tiles. IRG has over 250 choices and 10,000 slabs. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin and at marblecompany.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This time, College Dean of Kinesiology, Health and Athletics, Dion Miller, has 17 athletic teams on the roster and staffing responsibilities to boot. Escape is in the kitchen or in a dining room where food transports her. And cooking instructor and HR exec, Doug Ang, has lived on both coasts and traveled in between. On the journey, he's encountered new flavors and experienced new techniques, perfect for sharing with his students. But first, musician barista Sean Sullivan enjoys living in the cultural melting pot of the Bay Area. After immersing himself in the enormous variety of exotic and diverse ethnic flavors, he comes home craving a burger. And his favorite spot is in San Mateo at a place called Jack's Prime Burgers and Shakes. Jack's Prime is a place where people come and feel comfortable. It's not formal, but it is super friendly, and the quality of product that we put forward is fantastic. My name is Michal Mali, and I am the owner of Jack's Prime Burgers and Shakes. When people think of a good hamburger, they nearly always jump to the meat first. But for me, a great bun is the key to a good burger, because it's got to hold, it's got to suck up those juices, and it's also got to be able to last the course. So we work with Panorama Baking in San Francisco. We use Nyman Ranch beef for our chicken and turkey and alternates. We use Diesel Ranch and Mary. So we use high-end proteins, but we use great, great bread to keep it together. The main menu is built around the familiarity of the burger, but with different spins. But then, because it's such a tight menu, we decided on a monthly basis we would do new specials. And we rotate our craft beers every month as well. We do great product, but you're nothing without your staff. We're open eight years. Most people have been with me six, seven years. They bring a genuine hospitality and warmth to the place. We care, and that's what really makes any restaurant home. If people care and they're vested, that's the difference. It's, it's not the ingredients. Everybody can go and buy the same ingredients we have, but it's putting together with love and, and making people feel appreciated. All right, Sean, you crave a big old burger, but I can't help but notice your donuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's a statement piece, you it know, is, ev it everywhere is I go. People yeah. are like, uh, oh yeah, uh, your toll's gonna be $9.95, but I'll take a donut off your shirt instead. See, I like it. So yeah. how did you find this spot and why do you keep going back? So Jack's Prime, I found one time, I was spending the day in San Jose, I live in San Francisco, and I was trying to find a spot in between, and I wanted a burger, I went, I loved it. I was, I was blown away and I've gone back at least once a month um, for the last two years. And what is your go-to burger? Probably the crown jewel of the whole thing is the Phoenix from the Flames Burger. It's a spicy burger. It has four different layers of heat. You've got a roasted babano pepper, some pepper jack cheese,
pickled jalapenos, and then a chipotle mayo. It's just juicy, spicy, but not pure heat. You know, it has mm -hmm. that poblano flavor to it. Uh, and then you can add some extra fire sauce, which is like a thin habanero based sauce. And I always get on the side because it's really hot. And yeah, I, I love that burger with either sweet potato fries or garlic fries. And the sweet potato fries are as crisp as sweet potato fries I've ever had. Uh, the garlic fries as well. Doug's over here. Uh, he's like crazy. Oh, shaking his head. Tell me, tell me about your experience. Well, when you get to Jack's, number one, they have this parking lot that you got to be ready for it because you're going 50 miles an hour, then you got to jog into the parking yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. But once you get in there, the hostess was just fantastic. Got to see it. And the garlic fries were just phenomenal. We had such a good time with it. I had to fend people off my plate and so like, eat yeah. your own <laughs> fries. We actually ordered the Irish nacho fries. And so we had that as our appetizer so that we didn't have to have fries with our meal and we could have a side salad. Uh -huh. And they were pretty good. Uh, one of the disappointments was that the cheese wasn't as melty as I would like it. A little hotter? A little hotter. It? Okay. But the fries were really good. They were nice and crisp, mm -hmm. but they had a little salt, green onions, and some sour cream, and a stuff. A light and little calorie dish. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so we all shared it amongst the table, and it was gone like that. And then what did you get next? Uh, I got the Jack cheeseburger, but then I substituted it with the turkey, and then I also put an egg on it, because mm. I like mm. the runniness of mm -hmm. the egg. Mm -hmm. uh, it was still very juicy. It was quite delicious. A little decadent there. Wonderful. What about your burger? Uh, luckily, I uh, went uh, when it was Australia Day, so they had an Aussie oh, burger. Awesome. So Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. All but, right, mate. Yeah, it was absolutely <laughs> fantastic, because what they do is they put a pickled beet on top of the burger, then we ordered a medium rare, and it's really hard to find places now that'll cook your burger medium rare and almost. they nailed it, huh? They did, yeah. they actually did mm -hmm. so with the beet and then the fried egg, For sure. but it did cause a tectonic slide. So <laughs> when you bit into this burger, oh my God, it was so juicy. The whole thing just like slid off and I'm like, cut it in yeah. half. You know cut what? So half. I ended up eating the thing with a uh, fork and knife. And a lot of napkins. That's a five napkin burger. Uh -huh. Yeah. Let me tell you. What else should they order? I mean, all of their burgers there, I think what stands out is the ingredients are really, really high quality. You know, the bacon is really flavorful and crispy. The buns are really soft and fluffy. And then all their different sauces. I can't recommend enough the sauces. They do all their in-house barbecue, ranch. They have a bacon mayo. And I always order all those to go with my fries. All they of get, them to go with your fries? Oh, all of them. You, and, you and, of, the and, and the Sir Kensington's ketchup, which is my favorite ketchup of all time, that's right there at the table. Right. Yeah. We had the fried pickles. I mean, it was a pickle that was sliced lengthwise and it was dipped in this nice kind of almost a beer bag yeah. and it comes with a tiger sauce which was a little bit sweet a little bit of heat uh, yeah, after about five minutes thing just went they were yeah. gone. Fantastic. Absolutely, we had we went to town on that thing. What else did your group have? Of course, we had milkshakes, mm -hmm. yeah. and so very high quality ice cream that was used. Uh, we had the coffee milkshake and then also the strawberry milkshake. Both were very very good. Mm -hmm. Everybody had side salads instead and they of were, fries. Instead of fries, right? And it was a huge side salad that was really delicious, and it was kind of a surprise of a side salad because it was so big. And you had salmon. Yeah, we did have the salmon. One of my friends decided to be healthy and ordered the salmon. <laughs> Burger's healthy. I know. It's emotionally healthy. It is. It is. <laughs> there you it go. Is. But the salmon came out perfectly brown and grilled very, very well. And the salad that came along with it had half an avocado. Boy, that is heart healthy. Salmon and avocado. Salmon, avocado, salad, done. done. Those good fats, Absolutely. baby. Absolutely. Yeah. But she ate all of our fries. <laughs> That's a classic move. I don't want any. Yeah, yeah one more. Just one. That's yeah. what you do with fries. Mm -hmm. All right, Sean, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. If you want to go to a place with a classic, wonderful burger that's well thought out and unpretentious and a very comfortable atmosphere with big, giant booths, head to Jack's Prime. Okay, and Dion? Jack's Prime, if you like burgers that are big and juicy, there's egg on top, of course. <laughs> okay, Try and Doug? It. The standard five napkin burger, you got to go to Jack's Prime. All right, if you would like to try Jack's Prime Burgers and Shakes, it's located on South El Camino Real at 37th Avenue in San Mateo. The telephone number is 650-638-1479. It's open every day for lunch and dinner. Reservations are not accepted. And the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $20. Dion's pick is a hidden gem in the Tri-Valley area where bold flavors fill the plate and local wineries stock the renovated wine cellar. Hidden in a strip mall in Livermore, you'll find Posada Contemporary Southwestern Cuisine. The 
whole idea of the Southwest is to bring the Southwest flair or the smokiness, the shard. I'm Eduardo Posada, owner of Posada Restaurant. I was born in, in Ciudad Juarez, the border city of El Paso, Texas. My mother was the greatest cook, and she would use this expression, make those pants cry. Meaning that we get those pants super hot, truly open fire that brings the flavors to the skin, so that anything that we do here is gotta have a little bit of smoke. The heart of my cuisine is my sauces. But New Mexico has some great chilies. They're just so fruity, so elegant in the palate that it just creates a great experience. My son Alexis is the one that's charged of the wine collection, wine cellar, and he's been very fortunate to work along with some of the winemakers of this valley. The American dream, you know, I started selling burritos from the streets to now to a restaurant that, you know, that I can play with the big boys. <laughs> Posada is my last name. It means a place to stay, it means to welcome. Welcome to our house, welcome to our home. That's my touchy. <laughs> I think my satisfaction is to uh, see those people when they get their food and oh my, when they roll their eyes out, they say, boy, I want to go eat that myself. <laughs> All right, Dion. This is a real uh, American success story. They started out as a catering company, mm -hmm. and they used to cater for our college. Eduardo did mm -hmm. it out of his garage mm -hmm. and his own house. And finally, we're able to open a restaurant. The presentation, I think, of every single dish that comes out is absolutely beautiful. Just the colors, it's filled with love and care and all the different flavors, just pops in your mouth. One of the best appetizers I think I've ever had, the fire roasted shrimp with the guacamole. Oh man, comes with chips, a little side of flour tortillas, and the dressing is like a lime, garlicky, cilantro mix there. It's hard to figure out the flavor. You know, I've asked Eduardo a couple times, what is that? He won't tell me. It's so delicious. And so this time, I actually tried the carne asada crab chili riano. Carne asada was perfect, melt in your mouth. But once again, just the presentation of the brown carne asada, the red sauce, the green avocado with the chiliano, and then the white lump of crab. Mm -hmm. It was like a kaleidoscope of flavors in my mouth. Yeah, walking in, very lively. It was popping. You know, it was Saturday night at seven o'clock and it was slammed. We had a reservation and we still had to wait like 15, 20 minutes for a table. Eventually when the table opened up, it was right next to the kind of wine bar area and got helped right away, introduced to our waiter. And then because we were sitting at a loud table, which wasn't that bad really at all, um, they brought us an appetizer on the house. They brought us um, uh, the chips with the duo of sauces mm -hmm. and black beans. Fantastic, wonderful, and I think that the plates, you know, when they came, all the food, it really sort of mirrored the environment. I mean, the plating is absolutely captivating, and the, you can tell they spent a lot of time doing it. Like you, I had the carne asada, and unfortunately, our steak was cold when we got it. Ooh. Yeah, but the service, let me tell you, we let our waitress know, Olivia, and I don't know if she's part of the family or not, but she really cared. Five minutes later, we get the dish back, and this time, nice hot steak with it. The uh, crab, you know, I, I thought that they could have done a little bit more with the crab. It wasn't the, the, the fresh uh, Dungeness crab that, that we get, but if they did that, it would have just elevated that dish. Mm. Overall, I think it was, it was fine. Some of the other things we had were fantastic though. We had the short ribs, and those short ribs were braised until they could not give Is up. Is anybody not a fan of short ribs? <laughs> well, I had, had these short ribs, and they oh were my freaking God. awesome. Yeah. Those things, fork tender, the uh, chipotle sauce that it was in, it had a nice amount of smokiness. The black beans were done very, very well. The blackberry mole. Blackberry mole. Blackberry mole. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was great. It was exactly as he described, succulent, rich, beefy flavor. The juices are just running out of it. It was great, but I want to give a shout out to the fish tacos. So I got the duo of mahi-mahi tacos with watermelon salad. I'm a huge fish taco guy. I love it's making them. one of their them. signature dishes. I love dishes, eating yeah. some of the best fish tacos I've ever had in my life and probably the best mahi-mahi I've ever had cooked-wise. I mean, it was just glistening with moisture, super, super locked in with the flavor, had this 
awesome kind of like spicy chipotle, slightly sweet smoky sauce over the top of it. You're, Fantastic. You're over there like it was, I, I'm just yeah, like, oh my God. Yeah. I, I'm trying, <laughs> to, I'm trying to think it. of excuses to go to Livermore again. It was, <laughs> well, you know, speaking so of excuses, you don't need to because you, there, it's wine country out there. I mean, this is historic wine country. Livermore actually has wineries, you know, that date to the late 1800s. I mean, you've got quite a lot of local wine selection. Best and, kept and, little secret yeah, about their wines. Yeah, it sure is. I think Posada place. does a great job advertising the wines, the Livermore Valley. And, and they're nice. really focused on those. Yes. Yeah, I don't generally drink when I go out, but I felt like I had to. I mean, it was, everyone had a drink. <laughs> every It was loud. It was, you know, rambunctious in the best way. Um, I ordered one of their house drinks. It was called a sangrita. Mm -hmm. It was an agave slushy kind of thing topped with sangria. Mm -hmm. So Alexis is their son. Eduardo is the chef mm -hmm. and also owner. Always come around, always give hugs, sit down and talk. You know, he'll grab a beer or a glass of wine. He'll pour you an extra glass. <laughs> and what about desserts? Always try and save room for dessert. This time we had the cheesecake. Oh man, Whoa. it was so good. We split it amongst the table and it was one of those things where I wish I had just kept it to myself. What do you feel about the prices? So I thought the prices were a little bit higher end than I would have expected for the quality of the food that I got. You wanted more. I wanted better value. All right, Dan, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. So if you're looking for something with a lot of flavor, great family values, uh, Posada would be something I'd recommend in the heart of Livermore. All right, and Doug? Uh, great service, uh, inventive menu, and I would definitely go back. And Sean? Uh, great Southwestern dishes with inspired flavors and a really fun atmosphere. All right, if you would like to try Posada Contemporary Southwestern Cuisine, it's located on Marietta Boulevard at Stanley in Livermore. The telephone number is 925-606-1004. It's open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Friday, brunch and dinner Saturday and Sunday. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30. I just came back from a trip to the Caribbean, and what was in my glass in Puerto Rico, St. Thomas, and Jamaica? Rum, baby, rum! Dating to the 1700s, when it was discovered that molasses, a byproduct of cane sugar production, could be fermented and distilled, rum became the drink of the day in colonial times. Rum fell out of favor with American drinkers, but in the past decade, that's changed. Today, it's rum redu, as the spirit has been brought back to life. Stylistically, there are light rums, golden rums, and dark rums. Light versions have no oak aging, while dark rums stored in toasted oak barrels gain their deep amber color. Two of the many famed cocktails made with rum are white rum-based mojitos, and my personal favorite, the Dark and Stormy, with ginger beer and Gosling's Black Seal. Hmm, where is the beach? I need a drink. Doug's Oakland Pick is an Asian-centric eatery with a contemporary Californian twist and cocktails to boot. Noodles and fresh local ingredients are featured front and center. In Oakland at Noodle Theory Provisions. For me, noodles always means comfort. Szechuan food is very rich and spicy, and growing up eating my dad's cooking, I just thought this would be great if I could take what my dad taught me and incorporate it in a different way. My name is Lewis Cow. I'm the owner of Noodle Theory Provisions in Oakland. When we first started Noodle Theory, all the recipes that we had planned were on only on paper, so everything was in theory, nothing's traditional. When I think of a new recipe, I always think about what I love to eat, what I want to eat, and how I can combine that and have some incarnation that has a, has a noodle to it. The key to a great wok toss noodle is to keep the noodles moving, all your ingredients moving well. So there's just a singe on it. The seasoning is seared into the noodle. It, it gets a little smoky, it gets a little color, it gets a little heat, but that's the beauty of it. I love the wok. I believe in offering quality and value. It might be from my upbringing. My dad is a, an avid buffet goer. We don't shy away from the portion size. It's always a hearty meal. They wanted to try everything. My recommendation for anyone that comes into any new restaurant is to order everything on the menu. And it doesn't matter if the waiter gives you a funny look, share everything and take it home. You're not lamenting, oh, I have to go back to try that. No, you've had it. 
Now, this Noodle Theory Provisions is the second restaurant. The yeah. first of the chefs yeah. is in Rockbridge. But with the provisions part of it, they actually sell some of the right. hot stickers that they make there. And, and some you of the can sauces. Get sauces. And Absolutely. And this place, it draws from a lot of different countries. So you can get some Thai influence, some Japanese influence, some Chinese influence, and it's all under one roof. Uh, the place is very modern now. You know, you almost need to ride a fixie bike and have tattoos in order to go there. All right, speaking of, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> what was your experience? I love this place. Uh, I thought it was terrific. Um, it felt, you know, kind of elevated and nice, but it didn't feel fancy. You know, there was people watching the Warriors game. There were families with kids. There were couples on dates. There were older people, younger people. It was kind of like Oakland, kind of like the Bay Area. It was right. very diverse. We started off with uh, the crispy chicken wings and the chili fish sauce caramel. Oh man, those were a slam dunk. Those are straight up so good. Probably the crispiest wing I've ever had. I mean, just the most, just, you know, <laughs> super audible, super delicious, sticky with that sauce, the caramel. Because the sauce is very kind of Vietnamese with the caramel sauce yes. and the fish sauce. But those wings are really kind of Korean. So they took two different countries and just like smash it together and it works. Yes. We started with the fried wontons, I believe it was goat cheese in the inside, mm. and it came with a spectacular sauce that was kind of a sweet and a little spicy with the spice coming in at the end, kind of just to tap your tongue just a little bit. Perfectly fried. I mean, dairy in the Chinese diet is right. almost non-existent. Right. So I've been Asian all my life. My <laughs> mother has never cooked anything with goat cheese. Yeah. They're delicious. Yes. It works out really well. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of get like an Italian flair to it. You know, I've never mm -hmm. had this, these ramen noodles presented as sort of like a pasta dish before. It was, mm -hmm. just, it was different for me. Right. And so I had the mahi-mahi with the wasabi cream sauce and the garlic noodles. I mean, it, it was wonderful. You get these really well-cooked noodles that are just bursting with this robust garlic flavor. You know, you don't have to look to try and say, oh, is there some garlic? It's like, no, it's like garlic punching you in the face. Um, and then this wasabi cream sauce, which again, that's where I get that Italian -y fusion yeah, thing, like a cream sauce, wasabi. I thought it was delicious. The only thing was the mahi-mahi was a little dry. Mm -hmm. And had I not had like the most perfect mahi-mahi ever at Posada the week before, <laughs> I might not have noticed that so much, but because I knew the potential of the fish, mm -hmm. but it was still so good. And what, what did you have next? I had the Nyman Ranch spicy pork ramen, and it had like a peanut sauce. It was absolutely beautiful, like kind of a Thai dish, mm -hmm. also a Chinese dish. I guess I'm not Asian, so but I would still call <laughs> myself a ramen connoisseur. Uh -huh. It was brilliant. It was so good. Perfect mm. for the spoon. It wasn't too big. You didn't have to slice it. You didn't have to do anything with it. It was just very well done. Stack right. everything in one spoon. To, right. You don't have to be Asian to eat ramen. Yeah, no. No, no. It's not a prerequisite. Slurping, though, is a, pre Slurping. Slurping <laughs> is a prerequisite, though. Yeah. I'm working on that one. Yeah. So. <laughs> but you got you to lean over the bowl, and the proper way is to like, slurp it up. Oh, yeah. But we had the grilled duck sliced beautifully crisped up and on top of a bed of noodles with the scallions and everything's fresh. I mean, the scallions are incredibly fresh. There's some coriander, so you get that herbaceousness from there. Yeah, I wanna follow up on that too yeah. as well because I also had some duck. It was stellar. I think this is one of my favorite restaurants that I found in the last couple of years. Oh, there you go. <laughs> one of the things I did want to shout out was to the bar because we yeah. had mocktails yes. and then we had cocktails and they were both really, really good. And they've got craft sodas too. Mm -hmm. Did you get the lychee one? Yes. The lychee, the lychee one. Lychee oh cucumber, God. I think it was, was absolutely amazing. It's like very, a very good. floral bouquet to that drink. What about so those good. chicken noodles? Oh, the chicken noodles were really good. Mm -hmm. Lots of protein. The flavors were beautiful. They married very well. Garlic, ginger, little bit of spice mm -hmm. and almost chicken in every single bite. Mm -hmm. So value was excellent. You get so much, it's yeah. it's huge. And so we had leftovers for like two days and it seemed like they got spicier every day and it got it got even better mm. every single day with the leftovers. Mm -hmm. I had the uh, calamansi icebox pie, which is almost like a cheesecake. Oh, so there is a fruit called calamansi, very, very popular in the Filipino culture. Yeah. It's a mix between like uh, lemon lime and tangerine. So it kind of has that sweetness, but tart at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that dessert just sends you over the edge. How's the coffee, though? The coffee, not only is it fantastic, the brunch menu is, it's going to blow your mind. All right, it's on. It's on. I can see it already. You two are going out. You're going to have to get in there, Deanne, with these guys. Come on, Deanne. <laughs> the one thing I will say is the tables are a little close together. So for how tall the ceilings are um, and spacious the restaurant kind of feels, it definitely feels like they could take a couple tables out and make it a little bit more cozy. But they've got lines out the door. But they've got, <laughs> exactly. Very, very busy restaurant, and 
I know why, because it rocks. <laughs> All right, this is your spot, Doug. Wrap it up for us. Asian flavors in the Bay Area, um, wrapped up in delicious noodles. So go there and be slurpy. <laughs> Dion? Uh, if you're looking for a great ramen, really good flavor, noodle provision, for sure. All right. Perfect Asian fusion with good prices, a cool environment, and an awesome city. Can't go wrong. All right, if you would like to try Noodle Theory Provisions, it's located on San Pablo Avenue at 59th and Oakland. The telephone number is 510-922-8619. It's open for lunch and dinner Wednesday through Monday with brunch on the weekends. Reservations are accepted for parties of six or more, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $20. I have to thank my great guests on this week's show. Uh, hold, hold one second. I, I couldn't sit here and tempt you with this sweater the whole time, so I had to bring some donuts <laughs> for everybody. Um, awesome. Oh, oh thank you. Free, yeah. Oh, my God. I don't know. I have to save that one for you. All right. I'll keep the wine-colored one. Wow. Ladies first? Mm. I'll take the chocolate. Okay. Ah, there you go. I'll toast you with my donut there. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Sean Sullivan, the donut man, whose keep it simple spot steps it up a notch at Jack's Prime Burgers and Shakes in San Mateo. Dion Miller for striking flavors and lively atmosphere at Posada Contemporary's Southwestern Cuisine in Livermore. And Doug Eng's modern take on Asian fusion at Noodle Theory Provisions in Oakland. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers! Everyone with the donut. So now it's your turn. We want to hear from you if you visited any of our Check Please restaurants. You can post a selfie on Instagram, join the conversation on Facebook, and tweet us anytime. And don't forget to visit our website. All the shows are there, along with my wine videos and notes about the wines we drink on set. You'll also find our fun new web series, Taste This where we celebrate food and drinks around the bay. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by IRG as in-trend surfaces, quieter marbles and rare exotics, over 10,000 slabs in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin and at marblecompany.com. Mattress Systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. At Adeline and Ashby in Berkeley, online at sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport, now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Sutter Health CPMC, 7,000 employees, nurses, and physicians caring for their communities every day. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. La Tour Angel Artisan Oils, French-inspired and handcrafted in Northern California. La Tour Angel creates natural, healthy cooking oils that add new flavor to everyday dishes. Total Wine & More offers more than 8,000 wines from around the world and more than 2,500 beers, including hard-to-find seasonal brews and imports. Now open in Mountain View, Pleasant Hill, and Fremont.